today, the topic that I am talking with all of you is very sensitive and it is something that we all are having difficulties whenever we have in our life. And it is conflict. Maintaining godly relationship is the topic, but I will talk also resolving conflicts because it is not possible to maintain our relationship without we develop the skill of resolving conflicts. And as Christians, of course, psychology and other sciences have their own way of teaching people how to resolve conflicts. We also benefit a lot from it. But as Christians, we also think love and grace these two things are very much important for us to be successful in our attempt or try to resolve conflicts. How many of you experienced conflict in your social interaction? At least one time. Let me see. Okay, wow. I see a lot of people who didn't have uh, any social conflict. By the way, when I say conflict, conflict is not limited only in social interaction. It's not only in our social, in, uh, social interaction. It is even sometimes conflict happens within our mind. We sometimes have conflict within, our, within ourselves and with ourselves. Am I right for saying that? Am I right for Choosing this, we sit and try to have an answer for that. And that is an internal conflict. Conflict is all around us. Media is full of news that tells about conflict between people, individual, family, society, even the global community. Nations spy. There is conflict. Interest is in conflict. Ideas are philosophies. So many things, including our desires and emotion. You can just see how much conflict is there. Without even listening to them, we can understand there is a tension. And when it comes severe, right? Have you ever fought over remote con? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. When I was in university, even after we become grown up, adults fighting over <laughs> remote con in our student lounge. Some of them want to see MMA. Some of them want to see TV Africa. Some of them want to listen to news. Then we fight over conflict. Media is full of news of conflict. If you just turn on BBC or CNN or any Korean uh, TV channel, you will listen a lot. In fact, most of our, our news are telling us how conflicts are happening. You know what, what's happening in, uh, between Ukraine and uh, Russia and in Sudan, everywhere. When conflict is so much intensified, it will turn to be a war between parents and children. Even dads fight. Is that true, Brooke? <laughs> it's not only limited to school students. Even senior people have conflict. What shall we do? Let me give the definition of conflict first, as some dictionaries define. Let's read it together, the first one here. One, two. Okay, conflict, it's what? A serious disagreement. You disagree, but sometimes it becomes so severe. And it's also a kind of argument. We cannot avoid having argument with ourselves, or we argue every day with people. We argue ideas, we argue so many things. The synonym for this word conflict is what? Quarrel, dispute friction. The only thing we have to do is we need to know how to argue. I even sometimes doubt whether we always agree on everything. 
Therefore, we need to know how to respectfully argue. That is a skill that we needed to develop. Argument is inevitable. Then how should I argue with people? How should I uh, argue nicely as a Christian? First Peter chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly. This is the commandment. Since love covers multitude of sins. You see, you can change the word sins to wrongs, mistakes, misunderstandings. Only when you have love, that covers it. When Peter said this, he listed so many things before he said this one. And then he said, above all, above everything that I have, that I have mentioned above, keep loving one another. Why? Because love has the power to cover even the wrong things. Maintaining godly relationship is essential for our spiritual growth. As you know, most of the time when we start our semester, I will have like one session for almost each class teaching you about the spiritual growth. Spirituality is something that is growing every day. It's a process of growth. And maintaining godly relationship is one of the values of spiritual growth. And that we cannot maintain relationship without we have the skill of resolving conflict with love and grace, and which is a biblical mandate. Everywhere, every organization you go there is a mandate, responsibility, and as Christians, we have mandate. Like when God created Adam and Eve, he gives them a creation mandate to keep and protect the Garden of Eden. And now when we are saved as Christians, the Bible gives us what? A biblical mandate of what? Resolving conflict with the purpose of maintaining relationships so that we may grow in our spiritual life. And it has a social benefit too. Look here, a very happy atmosphere, positive thinking, smiling. And who, who doesn't want to, to belong to this kind of community? Sometimes the stresses and Depressions people are carrying in their mind because they were not able to maintain relationship, it is unbelievably very severe. Sometimes we need to ask this question, what would Jesus do? When you are not sure, when we are not sure what to do in a very specific situation, especially when we have conflict, instead of we do whatever we want or release our emotion, it is wise to just pause and ask this question. Let's read it, the question. One, two, three. What would Jesus do? This considers how Jesus might respond to personal situations in daily life. If you are not sure, if you are confused what to say, what to do, how to act, how to deal with a specific situation, then as a Christian in your quiet time, as you are praying, you may ask this one. Jesus, what would you do? and refer to the gospel, what Jesus has done in many interactions that he, have, he had with people. What we think, what we say, and what we do, and I'm assuming probably discovers the whole aspect of our life. It needed to reflect two things. One, it has to reflect Christ, and it has to reflect his glory. What does it mean? Here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, the Bible says, Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Even when you are angry, anything that you are doing is supposed to be done for the glory of God. And sometimes when I just reflect on my own life, some of the activities that I do, it is so hard to label them or consider them as something that I do for the glory of God. When I am yelling at someone, getting angry, then ask that question, could this bring glory to God? When I ignore someone, could that be for the glory of God? This is like a mirror challenging ourselves. Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Your studies, every activities, playing with your peer group, every relationship that you have with your, with your classmate, we are doing it for the glory of God. 
Let me give here at least four practical steps as principle to follow in our daily lives, targeting on solving conflict or resolving conflicts. One, let's read it together. One, two, understanding conflict. Two, responding with love. Three, extending grace. And four, seeking reconciliation. It is so hard sometimes to understand conflict. That's why we ask, why on earth this happens to me? Why on earth this person speaks to me like this? Why on earth this happens in our family or in every social relationship? We struggle a lot to understand, asking why, 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 why? But asking that by itself won't help. We need to understand conflict, the nature of it, how to respond. If it is inevitable, what are some of the things that we needed to develop? Here, conflict is inevitable in any relationship. It, raise, it raises from differences, differences in at least three things, and this is not exhaustive actually. Conflict can rise from any corner, but at least I say when people have different opinions, when our opinions are different, sometimes we are in a tension of conflict. When we have different personalities, every time when we see differences, instead of appreciating that and try to learn what is the nature of the difference, we are usually threatened, threatened. We will be threatened. That's why we want to identify ourselves with the same group. And then when expectation is also different, then conflict rises. As Christians, we needed to address this conflict in a godly manner. And when I say godly, at least the two things that I have mentioned, love and grace, they make every effort that we are doing godly, Christianly. It helps to avoid hurting each other and ourselves. And when I say here, it, I'm referring to resolving conflict. When you are able to resolve conflict, very successfully, you are avoiding hurting others and also hurting yourself. Maintaining relationship because, uh, becomes achievable when you have that skill. Which skill? Resolving conflict. And we need to think ahead and decide what to do today before even conflict rises. Sometimes when um, I have some physical problem and go to the doctor and the doctor tells me that, ah, oh, you maintain your health, and then I start going to gym. But technically, we're supposed to exercise, consume enough vitamin, eat healthy food in order to prevent disease, right? Not in a way of curative, but in a, a preventive way. Same thing here. Most of the time, we try to resolve conflicts before, uh, after they happen, when things are very hot, when the conflict is very much intensified, when a lot of emotions got involved. We try. That makes it so hard. But I say here, think ahead. Before it happens, prepare yourself. Know what to do in, in, in almost every conflict. The right time to learn the right course of action related to resolving conflict is now, before they arrive. When we have that uh, personality trained to resolve conflicts without involving too much or excessive emotion, our attempt to maintain relationship becomes successful. Ask God to give us grace to follow what we know. That means, I say, we need to think ahead and decide what to do before it happens. That's kind of knowledge, right? Theory. I should do. When this happens, I should do this one. But we do not fully trust in ourselves alone. We have to ask God in prayer to follow, to practice what we know. Otherwise, when time of trial comes, we will be overwhelmed by emotion or wrong reasonings 
we will be controlled by that because whenever emotion um, is triggered, bad reasoning controls. The second point is responding with love. Love is a foundation of everything, especially when it comes to godly relationship. We could not have any good and successful relationship without we experience love. Responding with love means seeking three things. One, seeking to understand, willing to understand, Usually we are so generous, even when we understand others, we think we understand others, but we are just listening to ourselves. Two, sympathize. Three, forgive. Understand, to understand others' feeling, we need to put ourselves in someone's shoes. And this involves their emotion. We need to put effort why I say effort here? It's because not easy at all. We need to put effort to understand others by balancing emotion and what? Logic. Most of the time, people who are able to balance these two things are the most successful people. Sometimes we'll be controlled too much by emotion and sometimes we'll forget emotion and focus on logic. But this thing has to keep the balance. And as you know, balance is beauty. Balance is life. If you lose your balance, probably you lose your life. Know how to respectfully present our opinions while generously listen to others. This is, being generous is not only on giving or sharing items or goods. Being generous is also in listening. Even when we listen, when we read books first before we criticize or give a critical reflection, we need to listen the author, listen people generously. That's the skill we needed to um, develop. And then after that, we also respectfully present our opinions. The second one is sympathize. The word sympathize refers to having a feeling of pity for someone, for someone else. Understanding between people and having common feelings. This is sympathy. When you sympathize, you identify yourself with the feeling of the other. We try, you try to understand and also you have common feeling with people. This is, this is a human feeling. When you are happy and when I am happy, that feeling is the same, it's universal. Christians are called to be kind and compassionate. And the word compassionate is related with sympathy. No love without the virtue of sympathy. So it, it, when we say love, and then I think sympathy is a dimension of it, as diamond, diamond has a many dimensions, and that's the beauty of it. And our love has so many dimensions, and one is sympathy. We need to sympathize others if we are determined to so resolve conflict. The third one is forgiveness. Stop feeling angry. Stop feeling resentful toward someone. And that's a decision. You have some feeling of anger and resentfulness. You know it. And then you decide to stop that. Then that is forgiveness. I'm not quite sure if forgiveness is forgetting. Because, you know, forgetting is not easy. It's, it's, uh, it's, um, I don't even think it's required. We can argue that other time. I, I don't forget unless I have dementia, you know. I keep that always in my mind. But the thing is, even with that memory, if I decide to stop anger and resentfulness, that means I'm experiencing forgiveness. If you know a bishop known uh, uh, by the name Desmond Tutu from South Africa, he, one of his famous book is titled, There is no bright future without forgiveness. It's almost like you are flashing on your future, a flashlight in darkness when you forgive someone. Extending grace is the third point. Well, God is the one who gives grace for people and what are we saying here related to grace? I didn't say give grace, I say what? 
extending grace I have received from God, I have to pass it on. How? How can we extend grace to others in times of conflict? When we are not willing to even smile for someone because of conflict, is it that easy to, to extend grace? Grace, this is the definition of grace. Let's read it. Grace is unmerited favor or undeserved gift. And we all have received this undeserved gift from our God. God has given us grace, unmerited favor. Then we need to extend that. Extending grace means three things here again. Extending forgiveness, extending mercy, and extending compassion to others. Even when they don't deserve it. Because God has given us his grace when we don't deserve it. And we are children of God. We experience, resemble Jesus, and try to do what he has done for us. Then what we do? Even when they, des when they don't deserve it, even when they hurt us, we are willing to extend grace. Develop the character of love before conflict arises. Have the strength, of ex uh, extend, strength to extend grace to others. This is a preventive method that I have mentioned. The last one. Seeking reconciliation. In my experience of ministry in church here in Korea and back in Ethiopia, one thing that I have learned is seeking reconciliation after conflict happens is a very hard task for many people. Rather, we prefer to block people, ignore, and cut relationship. That's the easier thing. That feels like I have some wound on my toes, and then the easiest thing is to amputate my, my leg. It's, it feels like that. Instead of treating it, the easiest way is to... Seeking reconciliation is a virtue. What are some practical steps to seek reconciliation in our relationship? Reconciliation means restoring broken relationships. It requires, one, humility. Two, honesty. Three, willingness to forgive. If you notice, the word forgiveness came under each principles that I have mentioned. That is very much important in our life. Consider others better than ourselves. There's no room for pride or arrogance in the kingdom of God. That's why Peter said in his first letter, chapter 5, verse 5, let's read it together. One, two. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. If we receive grace, that means we are humble. In conclusion, maintaining godly relationships is a journey that requires intentional effort. It's not luck. It doesn't happen by accident or by chance. It is an intentional effort. Resolving conflicts with love and grace is not always easy, but it is necessary for spiritual growth. Let us commit to apply these principles in our relationships and trust God for the outcome.